I'm Dave Ratt, and today let's go ahead and take a look inside one of the most beautiful microphones I've ever worked on. Back in the mid 80s, I was repairing mics for extra money. I get to open up all kinds of uh, microphones. Some of them are annoying. They're just packed in foam and there's grills and there's glue. Sometimes there's lots of tiny little screws and precision shells that slide off. An AKG D224 is a beautiful microphone. I had the pleasure of working on quite a few of the Sennheiser MD441s. Kind of looks like an electric shaver. I remember seeing Stevie Nicks singing into one at the US Festival in 1983. You know, she had that real kind of breathy voice with that kind of crisp top end that just sounds really cool that you normally would get out of a condenser. After working on these, I ended up with quite a few of them that I built out of parts and it became a, a kind of a real favorite. Excellent, I used to use them on hi-hat. Uh, I'd use them as a condenser mic. It's a dynamic mic that's got the fidelity and crispness of a condenser mic and also this clear low end as well. It's really an amazing unit. And we'll listen to one later on. Got this other one here, which is a uh, same exact mic. It's in black, it's a beautiful black mic, and it lacks the high pass filter, the five position um, high, rotary high pass filter. And it's just got this plastic um, XLR plug. So to get into this thing, um, it's be another mic. There's no signs of any screws or anything on it. It's, it's the only thing you could see that could possibly open is these little notches right on the tail here, which allow you to um, unscrew this to get into the high pass filter. But that's not how we're going to get into the mic today. So the first thing you want to do is um, the nameplate where the serial number is. It says MD441 dash U, and I believe that has to do with the connector there. And there's a little plastic bit here that you can very carefully pry up. And this plastic piece is just snapped on here right around the high boost filter. These things actually have a little high frequency boost switch on them which adds um, a little high frequency to it, making it even more condenser sounding. And when you remove that piece, there is a, a little flathead screw in there. I remember the first time I opened one of these, you know, I'm working on other people's microphones. I'd never been into one before, and I'm rolling it around in my hand. I finally pull that little thing off. I see the screw, and I'm like, oh my goodness, that's so exciting. I can get in there. That's a little precision machine, a little nice machine screw. And then I'm like, okay, what happens? And I'm trying to pull this thing off and it's not coming off. I was like, and I want to be very careful with it. And then I notice this thing slides it ever so slightly. It slides about a uh, maybe three thirty seconds of an inch forward. And once it slides, you can remove the top here. Look at that. And there's some little latches, some little, and there's one, two, three, four, five. And once you do that, you've also released this um, high pass filter. You want to be careful with that if you go in, because this is, if you pull this out, uh, you can see that there's wires attached there and they're very thin wires and they're very easy to break and quite hard to strip and solder. Top end of this is a very fine mesh, like a nylon mesh screen. On the end of the screen is a small bit of foam. Then it comes down, then there's a plastic bit here, which um, is where the diaphragm is, right alongside of theirs. And then uh, you got the diaphragm and the phase plug. It comes down into, here's a humbucking coil down here. And then if you look, there's these two square bits and there's spirals in there. So now let's go ahead and take this, watch this. We can grab these two pieces and if we gently lift, the whole housing comes out and it's just nestled in there. And these things are covered in this grease. It's a very thick, uh, viscous grease to, to damp it out. And the whole capsule moves inside on these two dampened, grease dampened springs as a shock mount. And not only does it move up and down, but it can move side to side as well. All right, so I don't want to go too much further into this one because this is a nice working microphone. Um, oh, before we get into it, if you take a 441 and you gently hit it, 
you can feel the damped diaphragm um, capsule uh, bouncing in there and um, moving back and forth. So let's go ahead and take a look in this box of goodies here. Um, now these are leftover bits from many years ago of broken 441s. So this is the grill that wraps around the front here, that wraps around the sides. And it's removable. There's two little tabs in there that can be bent out, pried out. And then you can see this one's broken here, but this will go around here. And they can be um, undone with a little bit of um, a sharp object. Here's the actual chassis. Uh, this one's been dropped. We can see that it's um, mashed. Now there is a, a small mesh screen built onto the chassis. It is all one nice Beautiful cast piece. Really, really um, cannot be inexpensive to make. This little mesh here, this fine steel mesh or uh, metal mesh, uh, goes on the inside of this to act as a pop filter, a metallic pop filter that won't deteriorate. Um, the lack of foam is great because foam rots over time, so that's going to give it some more longevity. Here is one of the capsules. And we can see that, let's see if we have one here. So this capsule, this is mucky muck. This, this right here is the um, very thin, fine nylon. And you can see it's, it's got resistive to its uh, airflow. And this is what wraps around the um, top of the capsule here. And there's a bit of foam, which I don't think I have here that is kind of held on by that. And we can see that we've got a, a phase plug, not unlike the 421 had, except this one's much longer. So it's really concentrating the high frequencies into the center of the diaphragm there. And then the low frequencies are coming around and hitting in the edge of the diaphragm. There's two paths there. And we can actually take this thing off and take a look at what's the diaphragm looks like and this one's a little crinkly they're not supposed to have these little dimples in there it's supposed to just look like this right here I'll put some metallic never put a metallic object next to a magnetic um, field where a diaphragm is because it's going to try and grab the screwdriver click boom and you'll ruin your mic but since this one's already ruined I'm going to do it and this is an extremely soft I mean you can't even f touching that with your finger you can't even feel the diaphragm. You can't even tell that you're touching it. It's so soft. And then there's a harder dome in the middle. So this hardened dome with a very, very soft surround, it almost feels like skin, like um, kind of a paper coated or a little powder coated skin. And then we've got our lead wires that come up to it and then various venting. Uh, we've got the ports around the side with, again, resistive um, nylon mesh or put a mesh. And then there's rear ports, which will affect the low end response, how much low end comes around, how give it cardioid and you're balancing out, um, limiting that low end. And then check this out. There's actual screws that I, do, I have taken out that allow you to, if you were to replace the diaphragm on this, you can remove it. Oh. And look at that. There's our diaphragm. Removable, replaceable diaphragm. And there's the magnetic pole piece with the rear venting that we can see that is these four, again, resistive myelin mesh. You can see the magnet's very strong. And then a longer port which I believe this black port comes all the way down and vents through this tube here, this flexible tube. Now, normally there's threads there. And there we got it. So now we can pull this out and we can see the um, goo that's on these um, damping bits here. There's some of that goo. It looks like almost like Vaseline, but it's much, it's firmer. It's not as, it's almost like halfway between silicon rubber and Vaseline. And this chamber here, here's one of those chambers. 
Um, now this chamber here, this dot capsule, where is it? Will have threads that are broken on this one that allow it to screw in to the capsule. And we can put that back together. Where's the little top? This guy will be up here. Boop. And then there'd be the part. And we can see that this is this unit there. All right. And let's go ahead and look inside the chamber. Um, this chamber actually has all of this inside of it. It's got your filters for your high boost. Look at this. There's um, some chokes, a transformer, capacitors, resistors. This is a full passive network, a substantial, hefty passive network that is built into the inside of this. It actually sits inside of here. Look at those old school solder joints. They're huge. We would never use something that bulky now. And then that goes inside of here. And the wiring comes out. And you can see that there's a yellow, a blue, a red, and a green wire. Um, oh, here's one of those helical springs that we can see a little clearer. And you can see how it moves. Let's go ahead and put this one back together really quick. And you can actually change the angle like this has to be slid in and that has to be slid in and if the screws loose it'll kind of mess everything up and it's a grounding screw so it'll so you can hear it click and sound bad put this on and um, before we finish up let's give it a listen let's see how it does as far as um being a condenser mic a dynamic that sounds like a condenser and also we'll compare it to a beta 58 and there we go hey 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 one two um, all right, so it's got that real kind of up close. Um, it's got a lot of low end, a lot of warmth to it. Let's see if the high pass filter is on or off. On oh, that high pass filter, the high boost. That's with the high boost on. Hey, hey, hey. and off. Hey, 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 hey. All right, and let's go ahead and turn the high boost on. Hey, all right. And there we, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up the high end on the mixer just so we can hear what the crispness sounds like on this mic. So I'm boosting up the highs to about 3 o'clock. Hey, all right. So this is our, um, let's get that uh, breathy sound to it that is, um, you know, very much like a condenser. And, but it doesn't have the pop booms you know where you um, have to have a lot of foam on a condenser um, it's well protected from um, p pops there all right so let's do the high pass filter hey 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 yep 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 and uh, we're losing the low end right there and that's with the low end all the way taken away which is how i'd run it for a hi-hat i use these for metal stuff and i really like the sound you can really add some top end to it without it becoming overly sharp and and crispy all right let's go ahead and plug a 58 in and check that out and a 58 on that same thing so we have that high boost but that sparkle's not up there. It's got almost got like a whistle. Hey, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, and without the boost. Hey, 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 one, two. All right, that's without the boost and with the boost. Hey, 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 hey. And we'll take the... Hey, 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 one, two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's boosted up. Ha uh, ha, uh, two, I'm going to boost the highs all the way up. Uh, and now it's up there, but it's a higher frequency of um, crispness. Um, a little less shrill. <laughs> all right. And uh, what do you think of my new backdrop? Cool, cool. Thank you for joining. And um, we'll do some more teardowns and fun stuff soon.